All right. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Revolution FC. I'm trying to... I'm trying to... I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit so I can hear myself think in my headphones. We are in July of 2000. We actually have the next two uh, pay-per-views set up. We're finally... I guess we aren't really starting to make a ton of money. Well, yeah, we are starting to make some money. I mean, we're not making as much money, but I mean, it, it's going to it's gonna keep rolling because our popularity is going up a bit. If I can remember where the it is oh my goodness okay tour company the event history title oh my goodness there it is 18.7 which i think is um i think i think that's definitely i, I think the last times we've done shows we we went up like two percent or something so um we're doing we're doing pretty okay let me see what our no, event history. 311 in Illinois, 289 in Nevada. So New Mexico got 337, except the gate wasn't. Nah, gate was gate was pretty good. We should definitely do some more, uh, some more New Mexico and definitely more shows in California and maybe Nevada. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing, we're doing a little bit better, doing a little bit better. Let's see how, how well we do. Uh, Revolution 23 at the end of the month, and we got 24 at the end of August, and 25 at the end of September. And I don't think we have a whole lot we need to really worry about right now, so I'm just going to go till Saturday. I think there's a couple people we were trying to sign. Also gives me enough time to find out uh, who's eventually going to get taken by Pride or UFC. Eric Pele, all right. Joseph Nowak. Uh, Yumiko Hota sustained that. She beat a local fighter. Of course, she is going to stay with her team. That's a pain in my ass. I really need her to leave that team so that I can potentially bring her to America. Can I have her? No, because if she founds a team, she might. Yeah, if she founds a team, she'll probably stay in Japan then and then I'll never get to use her I feel like the UFC events are coming by faster and faster because we're already at UFC 42 and like 66 was in like what 2005 maybe I can't remember that was like the first one that I uh, that I had all right um, I think I'm just probably gonna, anyone noteworthy? Joe's Fulton doing, UFC made a contract offer to Joe Hurley. Dennis Hallman beat Pat Militich. I wonder if Militich is going to get cut here. Oh, some people did get cut. Renzo Gracie got cut. Hmm. Ah, he lost to Tony Freakland. He lost to one of our dudes who was, you know, above average. He's one of our above average guys in our company, but it is Renzo Gracie. I don't know. I don't know if I want to chart. I don't know if I want to take no twenty three hundred dollars. 1500 is okay. He got mid level regional. He's a guy who could probably, yeah, he can main event. Eight and four record. That's not bad. He's got a couple losses under his belt. I guess we can negotiate with him. There we go. Uh, anyone else? Ooh. I think he's getting re-signed by them, though. Let's see. UFC cut him. He's 1,400. Mid-level regional. That's not bad. Wait, they cut him? Oh, no, they didn't. 
Uh, oh, they are keen to extending the deal. Okay. I think that's about it. Mm. Part of me kind of wants Renzo Gracie. Let me look at this. He lost to Newton, Lindland, and Freakland. He lost to three of our former, like, half-decent guys. So he probably isn't going to do much. But he probably isn't going to fare better than uh, Boss Rutten did when he was here. He is volatile. Getting into arguments. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave him alone. All right. Let's get to Saturday. <sighs> Division. Let's see. Do we get our signing guy? One Mott. Is he one of our dudes? Did I sign him up for anything yet? He must be signed with us, right? No, he's unemployed. Then why are you telling me? Did I? Oh, I must have. I must have shortlisted him then. Hey, Jordy, what's up? Oh shit! You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change. I forgot to change the game. There we go. Change it to actual WMMA five. That's right. I think this was, uh, yeah, I think at this point, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll still keep him short, shortlisted, but I mean, he's going to be 16 days. Ain't bad though. Uh, you know what? $1,300. I'll take him. There you go. John Lober signed Joe Hurley signed with them. Uh, Andre Roberts lost in pride. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he's low level regional around here, so. Uh, did you say you already do baseball? Yes, I did. I just got done with that probably like 10 minutes ago. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ooh. Low level of regional. 900 to fight. That's not bad. Two months and a week. I could take that. We got we got enough fights. We got enough guys. Tra Teligman. Uh, Robert Villegas, low level regional. He's going to be recuperating a little bit. He's a young guy, 24 years old. This is what I'm going to have to do. If I want to keep guys, I'm going to have to get guys who were already cut from bigger leagues. <laughs> Uh, okay, this a guy. Hospital visit. That's all right. Uh oh. Alexander Franco Nogueira has blasted Mark Hall on social media ahead of their scheduled fight. He was responding to comments made by Hall earlier on. You know what I should do? That's that's coming up, right? No, that's at twenty. That's at twenty four. I'm going to put some hype. Um, let me see. Let's put some hype behind. Um, where'd he go? There you go. Alexander Franco Nogueira. Let's make it a medium. Let's do some medium for him. And Fujita Arlovsky. Let's do let's do big hype for Arlovsky. I think that'll do well. I don't do a lot of hype sometimes, so 
I should maybe do something with it. Let's do like medium hype for Arlovsky. Hmm. Anyone else I want to do this for? Pile Shields, McKee, Imada. Oh yeah, Imada is leaving. He signed with UFC. Uh, Henkel, Buontello, nah. I'm trying to think, Aaron Tuffel. That might be a that might be a good idea. Um, I'll put a little bit of hype behind Aaron Tuffel. There we go. Pile Pile has a a fight coming towards him. I'm yeah. I think Mike Piles is close enough that I don't know how much it's going to affect him if he ends up losing. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> is basically hyping a fighter, basically the UFC with McGregor. I think so. I was going to say, does it say the higher the hype you choose, the more impressive the fighter must be to achieve bonuses and the more severe the criteria are for penalties. As an example, at low level, uh, low level, a fighter could expect to get bonuses for most wins, even if it was a tough split decision unless they're fighting someone who they completely outmatches because the pressure on them isn't so great. However, with high-level hype, even a solid unanimous decision may cause penalties unless the opponent was particularly tough, as the amount of hype will mean that the fans expect finishes or at least complete dominations. In all cases, criteria and size of potential bonuses and penalties are context-specific. That means the quality of the fighter and his opponent are taken into account game could recognize how impressive or disappointing the result and method actually are. That's why I'll go for Noguera being medium because he's got kind of a decent fight against Hall and he's building it up. Arlovsky's going to have an interesting fight. Tuffle's going to have, I think, an interesting fight. So I think it'll work out. <clears throat> so I'm going to I'm going to hype up Noguera like UFC does McGregor. <laughs> I need a I I need a star and that's going to be one of my big stars. <clears throat> um also I should look and see how many people have recovered for September. Let's see about fights. Hey, there's some people. Uh, Eric Pele should get his big, his first big fight. That'd be, that'd be a solid start. Uh, Ian Freeman, that wouldn't be too bad. Roman Zentsov. Hmm. Let's see, two and zero versus one and zero. That actually probably wouldn't be too bad. Uh, Noak Alger, that'd be really close. I don't know if I want Pele to go up against some Zentsov, I think would be kind of a, I think that'd be kind of a neat one. Let's do that one. Zentsov, Pele. What do we got? Those are preliminary and main events. Hypes anyone you see. Is it stealing time? Absolutely. Um, Kate Alger, let's put Alger maybe in there against uh, he faced Kason, but that was back in December 97, so they actually haven't faced each other in almost three years. Let's go ahead and do that. And main eventing and main card, so they'll go there for now as co-main. Uh, let's look at some light heavyweight stuff. Oh, that's women's open weight. Light heavyweight. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Jeff Curran should be there because we're in G -G 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 Illinois and see who would be a good fight for him. Jens Pulver, they just fought back in March. <clears throat> uh, okay. Tatsuya Kawajiri. That wouldn't be too bad. Uh, 
All right, let's do that. Where would they land? Main card, potentially main eventing, so there. Match me, Super Scar Mania, show in Brazil, advertising Eric Pele, just, just Pele to clickbait him. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be quite funny. Um, Ryan Bow, TV Gonson. I mean, they haven't fought. Uh, two and out revolution. Two and two. Let me see. He's lost his last two fights. Gonson's law uh, won his last two. I don't know if I want to do Ryan Bow like that. I mean, you know what? I'll I'll give him I'll give him the opportunity to try to break his losing streak against him. And they would probably be there. Alger Kason or Bo Gonson. I'm going to put Alger Kason because that's going to be an, a better fight, I think. Uh, Uematsu needs a fight. Here at Yoshida seems like the best idea. Uematsu and Takiyawada. That wouldn't be too bad. Let me see here. One. Two, six, and three. Oh, Uematsu is about. Uh, did I sign him to a new contract yet? I don't know if I have or not. He is getting paid twenty two hundred, so I assume. Yeah, I just re-signed him. Hey, Jack, what's up? All right, I think that's close enough. That should work out well. Where should I put that? Potentially main eventing and main event. All right. So these guys. Let me see Brian Johnson versus Giza Coleman. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put Uematsu, Uematsu and Wada um, as our main event. And Brian Johnson, Giza Coleman can co-main. Because Brian Johnson's never fought. He's never fought in our company. He shouldn't main event immediately. All right. Let me look at some more heavyweight fights. Ian Freeman. We got Monson and uh, Mikhail. Uh, he fought in June. He fought. Well, let's put Monson out there. Did I not do it? Ian Freeman, Jeff Monson. They look very similar, too. Should be great. Oh, my God. It's just a pair of drunk uncles punching one another. There we go. Should be should be great. <laughs> on, the, on the main card, possibly co-main eventing, and then Monson should co-main event. So I'll put them, like, halfway up here. Alger K should Alger Kason do nah Brian yeah we'll, we'll keep it there. Uh BRV online play idiots what? Yeah, we need an equivalent for China. Oh boy. Alright, couple more fights and then we have basically filled this card out. That's that is mm, I don't like that. How many heavyweight fights we got? We got four heavyweight fights, so we could fill a couple more light heavyweights in there. Uh, Matt Lee's never fought for us, so let's find a guy who would be good for him. Uh, Joe Camacho. I feel like I've had him for a while, and he just hasn't fought in a while. July 99, February. Okay. It's been a little bit. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> and if Joe Camacho doesn't win, he's going to kick Matt Lee's smart balls all the way up to the roof of his smart mouth and throw his ass back in prison. Uh, Barrett Yoshida and Pete Spratt. I would like to see where the rest of these guys. Uh, oh, Juan Mott would be available as well. 
He's never fought. But we'll do Yoshida Sprat. Juan Mott can get something else. So we're at what? Let's see. California, New Jersey, Illinois. So I could probably build 26. And week four in October, major show, medium regional, autofill for Revolution Sports. Uh, Nevada. Nevada hasn't. Yeah, May. All right. Yeah. Go back there in October. That'd work. <clears throat> And Jen's Pulver is way too good to get. <laughs> so there you go. Juan Ma and Shigatoshi, Shigatoshi Iwase. That'll be planned for October. And I don't think we have enough heavyweights right now. No, we don't have enough heavyweights that I want to put together. All right. <coughs> So we have everything filled out through September. That is that is very good. And we already have our first thing for... Oh, shit. Uh, okay, so Fujita got offered a contract. One month sign. Valega sign. Tilligman sign. Nakayama left our roster. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> we already heard this thing raw shit, yeah. What is oh, okay. I was like, why is it so quiet? <clears throat> Turn that up just a little bit. All right, Revolution 23 featuring the the now leaving Kazuki Fujita versus Andre Arlovsky. And an Andre Arlovsky is since he's still contracted with us is going to face the heavyweight champion. <laughs> Maybe we, we still have Hanko and Buentello as uh, guys who could uh, do this as well. Main event, 4-0 Andre Olofsky versus the 1-0 Kazuyuki Vegeta. Uh, first time they have fought Andre Olofsky's main eventing a revolution show for the third time in f in his only four fights. He has a five-inch reach advantage, everyone assuming Olofsky as a big favorite to win. Mike Pyle versus Jake Shields is the first time they have fought revolution. Pyle will be leaving revolution after this fight as I as, as I put some hype around him. Go me. Uh, Antonio McKee versus Toby Amata. Amata will be leaving after this. So McKee um, seems to have a, a, an advantage here. 7 nothing against uh, in the staff pick. So that's good. Brandon Lee Hinkle, Paul Boantello. Hinkle has won his f uh, four of his last five fights by decision. He is 4-2, and two, so that's good. Um, the ones he lost against Joel Sutton by decision... Uh, Frank Trigg by unanimous decision. So uh, he's never been finished, but he has never finished either. <laughs> so he'll be facing uh, Paul Buentalo, who I think is very similar to that. Uh, no, he lost by submission last time. He lost by majority decision. He did win by TKO once, but uh, most of the time he's either lost. If he's lost, it's been by submission most of the time. And when he's won, it's been by decision, except for when he beat Alger. So I'm expecting this one to go to decision. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Scuffed Kurt Angle take it on at Tim Legic. Uh Calder, the big favorite to win in this one. This is the first time they have fought. Let me see here. Scuff Kurt Angle comes in uh, went losing five of his last six fights, including three straight thus far facing Lajic. And uh, Lajic coming in, having lost four of his last five fights. So both these guys looking for a win. Someone's going to finally end up with a win. We'll see if it's Kohler or Lajic. A lot of people going for Kohler on this one. 
Kit Cope versus Alex Cook. Most people going for Alex Cook on this one, despite the five inch reach that uh, Cope has. He's uh, one and one right now, so not a ton that you can uh, look at as far as his body of work. Alex Cook, however, uh, has done nothing but lose. He did nothing but lose in Pancrase, except for once, and he's done nothing but lose in Revolution. But everything right now is pointing towards Alex Cook finally getting that first win in Revolution and that first win since 1995. This man has not won in nearly five and a half years. Could this be the night against Kit Cope? I didn't know. No, Cope didn't get a. They didn't get signed by anybody. All right, here Yuki Abe versus Ian James Sheffa. Sheffa, a big favorite in this one. Abe coming in having lost four of his last five fights. His last win coming against Alex Cook over a year ago. Ian James Sheffa, I think, coming in losing three of his last four fights. His last win coming uh, almost a year ago when he beat Stephen Powling. Although the level of guys that he lost to in Alexander Franco Noguera and Scott Adams, a uh, potential light heavyweight champion and, of course, the current heavyweight champion, leads me to believe that he's got a pretty good shot at at least getting a win here, as when he has lost recently, it's been to quality opponents. Hurl, Neural, sorry, Neural Shakir and Greg McIntyre. Shakir is making his pro debut. This is his very first pro fight here. And Greg McIntyre uh, has only lost thus far since he has been signed. So we'll see how it goes. He lost to Nathaniel Baroni, Hirono, and Kit Cope. So not the greatest set of guys to uh, lose to. So. Uh, some of it looking as uh, Shakir might be able to uh, get this. He does have a weight advantage. McIntyre, though, has a six-inch reach advantage. Nick Sarah and Kunioku. Sarah is making his revolution debut. Kunioku's had a, I thought he's had a few fights with us. I guess not. He's been an average, an average to maybe below average fighter in Pancras. Uh, but he comes here to get his first fight here very close between the both of them we're going to find out who is going to get his first win in his revolution debut <coughs> immediately tries a takedown attempt nice uh oh another tried for a takedown i don't know how good of an idea this is here but uh Let's see here. Takedowns. The jujitsu guy and the submission fighting guy. I'm utterly shocked that both of these guys want to take it to the ground. And uh, it looks like Kuniaku's got the advantage. I think he got the takedown. I'm pretty sure he did. So we'll see here. Kuniaku doing doing at least a little bit better. Yeah, he's he's definitely got. Uh, he did the takedown, right? Yeah, he got the he got the takedown, and he's definitely doing a lot of ground and pound here against Nick Sarah. So, right now, Kunioku getting a strong first round here. Sarah's gonna have to do something in here in the second round. Ugh. Okay, getting a getting a takedown is a good start. Let's see if that uh, does anything here. Oh, never mind. Kunioku just, uh, I think, out-wrestled him. All right. I think Kunioku is going to spend the rest of the time just basically bodying him. And uh, this could potentially go to Kunioku then. <coughs> Fight metrics on that one show that uh, Kunioku ended up getting the advantage even after being taken down, so... Grab his dick and twist it. Twist his dick. <laughs> Give him the old dick twist. Oh, my God. My roommate turned me on to that. And so, like, every once in a while, he he just will just go, Give him the old dick twist. <laughs> All right. 2018 Kunioku, 1919, 1919. We're going to a third and decider round. 
A majority draw. Kunioka immediately gets the takedown. He's going to make sure that uh, he's going to um, prove everybody wrong here by uh, just firing off on uh, Sarah here. <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna prove that they should have just given him the win after the first two rounds. <coughs> oh shit! Was that a big strike? Big strike! Crunching elbow to the skull. This guy's a submission fighter, but he's just ground and pounding his way into this. I'm sure Kuniyoku is not gonna be happy that he even needed a third round, but nonetheless, that one should it clearly go to him. And they're going to give it to Kunioku here by unanimous decision. It was a good fight. Good fight. Uh, thanks all of his fans. Name checks his sponsors. And he praises Sarah for his skill and toughness as he gets the win. And that is uh, Sarah's first official professional loss. So there you go. Very close. But Kunioku came out uh, clearly at the... Uh, uh, better at the end here. All right, Shakir in his professional debut against Greg McIntyre. Let's see how this works out. Uh, that's right. We are in California, so Greg McIntyre, a hometown boy, facing off against uh, Shakir here. By the way, Shakir is four inches shorter than him, so should uh, should uh, should do well. At least McIntyre. But, I mean, size has never meant too much in this. He had someone like uh, Noguera who'd beaten a lot of people, um, you know, beaten a lot of people uh, bigger than him. Doesn't look like any anything particularly better. Um, I mean, Shakir seems like he's at least uh, trying to press here. McIntyre's just kind of hanging back. But 10-9 for Shakir here as uh, he's looking to at least make sure that there's some action going on. All right. So Shakir, Shakir's still getting in some uh, some good shots here. I think he's he might be too much for McIntyre right now. McIntyre's going to have to try to try to finish this. Oh, takedown. No. That that could have that could have changed things. Oh, uh, still, still. I think if he if he can keep from getting taken down, at this point, McIntyre won't have anything to look at. Yeah, he he tried, he failed, and I think Shakir did enough to get this in two rounds. All 2018 for Nuri Shakir. There you go. Yeah, McIntyre just couldn't do anything. He tried to go for the uh, for the takedowns. It didn't work out, and he still is winless in Revolution. Nuri Shakir winning his pro debut. Thanking everyone on his team, his uh, fans and sponsors. He's delighted and celebrates his career with a win. Hiroyuki Abe, Ian James Shafa. Two guys who uh, could use a bit of a win here. Both guys of uh, you know climbing. I'd say they're probably towards the middle of the ranks, middle up, maybe not quite upper, but like you know, middle of the ranks in uh, in the light heavyweight division. Neither of them doing amazingly, but still doing okay. I mean, they have their they have their moments. Four. Oh. It's 1232. That's oh god. I literally <laughs> I literally this is what happened is I let it go for a few slides and then I like closed my eyes, yawned and then rubbed my eyes real quick. And then just by the time I was done rubbing my eyes, it comes to official result. So he just shoot knocked him out. He just he just head kicked him and he's done. <laughs> I 
I literally, like, it literally was just like, I yawned and rubbed my eyes, and when I looked back up, it was over. I just figured it wasn't going to be done that quickly, but Ian James Schaffer getting the win. <laughs> Kit Cope against Alex Cook. God, am I gonna be am I gonna be rooting for Cook to get something going here, man? Three and twelve record. Any any anyone with uh with a uh, uh, a hint of um desire to have a competitive um competitive aspect to their to their divisions probably would have gotten rid of Alex Cook at this point, but. I always see these guys who have six or seven losses and can't and haven't been able to make anything of it. It just makes it that much better when they. Uh... Uh oh, uh oh! I think he'll be able to take him down. There you go, Americana. He got it. Alex Cook wins. Cook wins. Cook wins. Three forty-three into round one. He takes him down. Kit Cope did everything he could to not get taken down. He gets taken down. He gets put in the Americana. It's over. Alex Cook separating, getting his first official win in over five years. His first official win in Revolution. He's done it. See, this is this is why. You know, six losses. It's gotta. It's gotta come around at some point. Cook wins. Cook wins. Oh my goodness, Alex Cook. He praises his team, his sponsors, and his fans. The man has finally done it. Well, there you go. Alex Cook with his first win here as we go to scuffed Kurt Angle and Tim Lajic. Like I said, it's always kind of funny that at this angle, he definitely looks like Kurt Angle. But like when you look at him like dead on, he looks nothing like him. If I remember right, he he really. Yeah, he looks like nothing like him when he when he when you just look him face dead on. He actually looks like a, he actually looks like just a really thick headed Joe Rogan. Just a really oh. All right, that was the end of the first round. I didn't see what happened. All right, it seems like uh, Lajic might have uh, be getting a bit of an upset on him right now. <laughs> All right, Kohler is uh, Kohler's trying to keep this going. I think yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're in California. So Lajic, the uh, hometown boy, if he can get himself a. Uh, a, uh, an upset victory here against Kohler. That'd be really something to see. Lajic trying to shoot in on him. Oh, my goodness. Tim Lajic gets the takedown. Two minutes left. Oh, this could really be something. Lajic trying to lock in a Kimura. Oh, my goodness. Tries to transition. That's the end of the second round. Lajic might be taking this one. We'll see what happens. 2018 Lajic, 1919. 2018 Lajic gets a majority decision victory. Tim Lajic with the underdog at victory. There you go. All the sponsors for backing him. Thanks his family, friends, and supporters. It was a tough fight. Show of respect to Brad Kohler. Uh, not a huge upset, but definitely a minor upset, at least for Tim Lajic on that one overcoming at least some decent odds here to get himself the win i'm glad he didn't tap him out too i'm i i want no one else to get tapped out in this because i want to give alex cook the su the submission of the night bonus i mean i could still do it anyway but it'd be nice brandon lee hanko paul buentello John McCarthy, the ref, as he uh, has taken off his headset from the booth to uh, to, to to ref this fight, uh, I'd say these two guys are are looking in to a potential uh, heavyweight. I'm not saying they're gonna get a heavyweight championship match, but uh, I think whoever wins this has the opportunity to uh, be in the conversation 
as far as being a contender is concerned. I really don't like the way the rankings work in this game. I'd really like to just make my own rankings. I really should just have a sheet somewhere where I make my own rankings and just get like a top 10 in in the divisions. And then I can just work off that as far as my um, fights are concerned. <clears throat> And then I don't have to worry about looking at people all the time and, and wonder, you know, what what I should be should or shouldn't be giving them. <laughs> all right, let's see what happens. Hankel, big strike. Big big round for that one. Let's see what happens. Possibly. Let's see. 1919, 2018 Hankel. 2018 Hankel. Brandon Lee Hankel. Gets the win here. I thought maybe it was going to go to a third round, but Brandon Lee Hankel with a surprising victory over Paul Buentello coming back to prove that he is he is ready for a possible shot at the heavyweight championship. Paul Buentello is uh, now with three losses under his belt. You know, Eha was one thing, you know, losing to Fabiano, then losing to Jake Shields, but losing... Losing here to uh, Brandon Lee Hinkle shows that Hinkle uh, is no fluke, and I think he's definitely in the conversation as a heavyweight title contender. There you go. Name check to everyone at Hammer House. His sponsors, friends, family, supporters. That was a tough fight. Gives a show of respect to Bontello. Ooh, here we go. Antonio McKee in his revolution debut versus the now leaving Toby Amada. Both men are uh, hometown guys. Kurt Funk, the referee in this contest. Here we go. Big time fight. McKee immediately with the takedown on Amada. Holy shit. Oh, my God. This is his debut, right? No, he, he lost his first fight. Who did he lose to? Giza Kalman. Of course, he, Kalman is quite a bit heavier than him, so let's see. Oh, my goodness. McKee is just having his way with Amada here on the takedowns. Jesus. McKee definitely is using Imada to make a point. Rear naked choke, not able to make it happen. Ooh. Imada's going to be saved by the bell on this one. But we're going to go to round two. Immediately takes him down. McKee is looking to make an example out of Toby Imada here. He's going to spend two rounds just beating the tar out of him and sending him back into UFC. Holy crap. Is is Imada going to do much of anything? He can defend against chokes, but that seems to be about it. He can't really seem to do much else as McKee is just smothering him. It's a clear 2018 for all three of them and a clear unanimous decision for Antonio McKee. Jesus. All right. Goodbye, Toby Amata. Hello, Antonio McKee. His first Revolution victory. Praises his team, sponsors fans. He praises Amata for a tough. I don't know how tough a fight it was. I think the only thing, I think the only issue McKee really had was the fact that he couldn't lock in a uh, a submission on him. Well, we got Mike Pyle versus Jake Shields. Mike Pyle's leaving after this, so uh, you know. I, I'd root for Jake Shields, but I feel like Jake Shields won't be here beyond. Uh, be, <laughs> Jake Shields won't be here beyond the end of the year. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call Jake Shields not being here uh, at the end of 2000. <laughs> That's just my own personal feeling. Looks like uh, Shields is uh, doing well to just let Pyle kind of punch himself out here. Never mind. Pile coming in to uh, make something happen. <clears throat> Shields was doing well to defend himself, but then he got caught. And I think uh, that's done a number on him now. 
I think Pyle has the clear uh, yeah, first-round victory on that. Shield just has to uh, make sure that he doesn't get uh, hooked again. Yeah, he's, seen, he's throwing a lot of punches, but not really hitting a lot of them right now. Shields is, uh, I think, just trying to take him down and get advantage here. He's going to have to make something happen because Pyle's throwing a lot of punches, even if they're not landing. He's at least pushing something. And Shields needs to win this this uh, this round. And I don't think it's going to happen. Because Shields is playing very defensively, but he can't. He, it's not not going to happen. I think he waited way too long to uh, get that. I think he waited way too long to try to take him down, and I think that's going to do him in here in the end here. All three judges 2018 for Mike Pyle. Yeah, Shields, Shields I think, just waited a little too long to come back and try to, try to make something happen to that. So Mike Pyle getting the win here by unanimous decision. There you go as he gets a win heading out the door. Praise this team. Tough fight. Gives a show of respect to Jake Shields. All right. Andre Arlovsky, Kazuyuki Fujita. It is time to go. Main event of Revolution 23, Arlovsky versus Fujita. Arlovsky wins. I'd say he's fighting for the heavyweight title in his next fight. Let's get it going. <clears throat> also gets a good good opportunity to send Fujita packing as he goes to uh, Pride or Pancrase. Uh, it doesn't say. I thought Fujita maybe he he wasn't. Oh Jesus! Immediately got. Uh, oh my God! It's over just like that. I was like he ate a big punch, but <laughs> ate a big punch. Slept against the ropes. He's getting the crap kicked out of him by Arlovsky, and it is over. Kurt Funk was a little slow to react. Should have been stopped earlier as Fujita was basically out on his feet, and Andre Arlovsky showcasing exactly why he's getting a heavyweight title match next. And uh, there you go. TKO strikes 112 into round number one, sends Fujita packing, as I'm pretty sure he's getting... Sent by someone else. Let's see, thirty-three thousand dollars, three hundred nine in attendance. Critical rating is good. Is it, if it's at least sixty, that's that's good. And commercial rating is still much better than it needs to be right now. So that's that's very good. So we have our broadcast team, one point eight percent in popularity. Uh, yeah, Alex Cook getting submission of the night, uh, fight of the night, Andre Arlovsky. Um, God, I don't know if I want to give it to them. Knock out of the night, Ian James Schaffer. Uh, you know what? Uh, fine, I'll give Arlovsky fight of the night. Why not? I think I think it should be Cook or Schaffer. Maybe maybe even just uh, that's all right. I'll take it. <clears throat> they're getting submission. They're getting they're getting uh, knockout. It's all good. Let's get it going. Look at that. Wow. $33,000 from that one. Ads and subs are doing well. Sponsorship has gone up. Merchandise is doing pretty A-OK. -okay. The gate receipts are very nice. It's about the best gate we've done by a few thousand dollars. So Toby Amata and Mike Pyle both done. Scott Adams is coming back. I believe he's uh, set to defend his title here soon. Uh, he does not have an official fight set up yet. So you know what? I'm thinking Arlovsky probably, yeah, he only needs 20 days. So I think by the end of the month, Revolution 26's main event I think I already know Revolution 26's main event. We're gonna get a heavyweight title fight. We're gonna get we're gonna get um, we're gonna get Adams versus Arlovsky for the heavyweight title. That is that is gonna be Revolution 26. 
Now that Scott Adams is, uh, oh no, no, he's still got, oh, he's still got four months of recuperating. You know what? We need a, we need an interim title. I think we need an interim. T- Should I put that as an official belt? Do I need to? Do I need to do an official belt with that? I think I might. I think I might do that. Let's see here. Revolution FC interim heavyweight championship. There you go. Heavyweight division. There you go. We'll have ourselves an interim heavyweight belt because we do need um, some sort of we do need some sort of fight here. Four months is way too long. Staying up to see Alex Kukuing is worth it. You go to sleep now. All right. Thanks for coming by, Light Death. I appreciate it. <clears throat> How long does Brandon Lee Hankel have? He has twenty-seven days, so more than enough time to recover and start planning for October. Oh, did I accidentally put the the show on Monday instead of Saturday? Is that what I just did with... uh, I meant to do Saturday. You know what? For a Monday night show, I'll take it. I made it dumb. Oh, I did Monday that that time too. Can I change it? No, I can't. That's a Monday as well. I forgot to change it to Saturday. I did Saturday there, but we're going to get another Monday night show in Jersey. That's all right. I'll take it. All right. So we're going to have to wait just a little bit here. We're going to get to Monday and see what sort of new people have arrived into the world. And I think we'll have enough for one more event. And then I'll call it a day. There we go. All right. Pride FC and Sky Perfect Smack Girl is open. Uh oh. Ryan Gracie. Ooh, another Gracie. What is he? He's volatile. Why is every Gracie just a piece of garbage? <laughs> Kerr clashes with Conan. Conan. Uh, Hirataka Yakoi. 1500 a fight he's an unknown though in america so i don't know if that's hmm i might shortlist him just to remember him oh we'll shortlist him same on otaka 800 a fight see i could do 800 a fight for even an unknown he'll move he'll move base over here so we'll do that. I just realized when I signed some of these other dudes, I didn't sign them for like 10 fights. So I need four years, 10 fights. And yeah, this is what happens when I do this, when I've been like tired. One Mott recovers. Phil Baroni. Hey. Let's do it. I'm sure he's going to get immediately signed by UFC and we're not going to be able to do anything with him. Bobby Hoffman. Let's see. He's from Bettendorf. All right. So he trained with, um, what's his nuts? Did I not give him his four? Oh my God. I keep, I keep forgetting four years, 10 fights, four years, 10 fights. Phil Baroni. Come here. Four years, ten fights. There. <clears throat> Mustafa Machado. Eh, we'll move him over here. We'll make stars. That's how we that's how we do things here is we make stars. And then they get taken. Alright, four years, ten fights. There you go. Alright. By the way, I just realized like my head was cocked like way like leaning to the left. Let's see here. I mean at this point, I'm just basically signing 
I feel like I'm I'm now getting to a point where I don't have to sign just every every like schmuck off the street for a hundred dollars. But I do it anyway because hey, I could fill out my undercard. And then the guys who I've been building up through that time can sort of main event and they have a bit of a name value to them. All right, Joe Sutton left. Let's see. Boss Rutten beat Matt Anderson at a large local show. Fujita left for you. Pride. All right. Cool. Let's get to Saturday. <sighs> You're getting there. <coughs> All right. Let's see where we're at. Uh, Machado signed, Baroni signed, uh, Irma Von Hoff signed with Smack Girl, Otaka went to Pride, mm, Nolan left for Smack Girl, Tuffle left for Sm <laughs> All right, so there goes my whole women's division. Cool. <laughs> so that's going to be pretty much gone at the end of this. Dope. I don't even want to put hype for Tuffle. Arlovsky, of course. Small gain. Okay. Nogara should do pretty well, I think, with his. <laughs> I was to say, I don't think... So I got a Mary Jackson is, you know, if she doesn't... I think if she doesn't win, I just cut her. I think even then I just cut her because I literally only have like what three? No, I'm down to like one woman now. So, yeah. Where's my short list? There's the short list. Um, can I can I take her off the short list? Take her off the short list. Um, we're in Clark, Luis Santos, Matt Anderson. You know what? Um, I'll keep him around because I, I bet you I'll be able to get to sign him here soon. So Milicic, Hota. You know what? Hota's probably going to. Hota's just not going to join us. And then by the time I get to do a women's division again, it's going to be way too, way too late. <laughs> <clears throat> so it looks like this will be the final uh, women's open weight fight for a while. And I kind of knew that was probably going to happen. All right. Uh, let's see what we have for October. All right. Now we have Santiago Martinez. Um, yeah, he could face him. And late heavyweights. Anyone that Jens Pulver can fight. <clears throat> Baroni, maybe. I'll take I'll take Jens Pulver and Phil Baroni. There you go. And let's go. Sutton should be there against. Whoops. Uh, Hirono. Hirono sounds. Both these guys need a win, so we can give them that. Lober Machado. Yeah, we could do that. There we go. We'll have more heavyweight fights coming up. All right. I wonder if I should just take the women's fight off. I wonder if I should just do that. Just to get the just to be like, all right, go. Just get out. You know you're you know you're going to be gone anyway, so. And you know what? I'll 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 make it. I mean, they've been they've been working towards it. I'll I'll give them that one last fight. It'll at least have some closure. Rather than just, like, throw it out. Like, don't want to work with me? Fine. Fuck you. 
All right. Oh boy, okay. A lot of people left the oh, all right, Mark Hughes signed with UFC. Bobby Hoffman, Brian Gare, he signed with us. Uh, Aaron Tuffle left. Casey Nolan's leaving. So Mary Jackson is about the only one left. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised to see that they just decided not to sign her. Is there really going to be enough for them to actually do a show? I mean, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's seven people. And now they've taken over. Oh, no, they haven't taken. Who's number six? Oh, Shuto. Shuto is technically lower than us. And they've got a grand total of six people. So Shuto's not doing any shows. We're at least doing shows because we just sign anybody and everybody under the goddamn sun. We're down to Aaron Tuffle and Mary Jackson, and Tuffle's leaving. So our women's division's done. All right. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go through this and just be like Mary Jackson is signed with. Uh, you know, with this Ring Fit Adventure thing I got for the Switch, I would love to see a racing game incorporate the Ring Con <laughs> for driving. It'd be interesting. Like, it's very wee, wee wheel type thing. But, I mean, you get yourself a durable Pilates ring that already has, like, nice cushions on it. And spin it around. You still get yourself a nice little workout. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if Nintendo would allow that. They probably would. So what, Rink Fit Adventure is like a first party game? Uh, let's see. Baroni joined the team. Wes Gassaway. Uh oh. Wes Gassaway sustained a major pectoral injury. How long is he out? 11. Oh, wow. He's out for a year. And he has never fought for us. So he was he was set to set to debut. Um, at what? Not the next show. Yeah, he was set to debut next next Saturday. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and delete that because the fight is canceled. And we have uh, Thomas Denny against to be announced. It's a little too far away. So Denny will be moved to 26. Move him to the main card. And we'll see if we can find a, a competitor for him. Oh, yeah, we'll find some competitors. Uh, Ian James Shaffa. Let's see. Kunioku. Alex Cook. Yeah, let's see. Thomas Denny's lost three of his last four. Should Alex Cook face him? We should do that. There you go. Big man on campus, Alex Cook. We'll move that bad boy up. Because <laughs> what? Main eventing preliminary card, main card, main card. Main card potentially main eventing. We'll move him up here. Sutton should go up here too. Um, Lover should whoops. Lover should go up. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll do that for now. All right, Arlovsky is ready for his fight. All right, how long until Hinkle is ready? Two days, all right. So we got our interim heavyweight title fight that we can book here in two days. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, son. It's on. It's fucking on. Yes. He's volatile, but fuck it. It is tank fucking Abbott. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Yes. Oh, my goodness. The landscape of Revolution FC has just changed. Tank Abbott. Oh shit! You know what? Let's let's upgrade this. Oh, I'm excited. I am excited. Tank Abbott. Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Dave Benito cut. Uh, Mid-level regional? That wouldn't be too bad. John Dixon. John Dixon wouldn't be too bad at all. 1300 Benito costs 1500 Let's see. Uh, let's shortlist them. And we'll shortlist him too. There we go. Possible guys for next time. All right. <laughs> Tank Abbott. Let's go. Oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm happy with that cyborg. Oh, Evangelista Santos. I was like, cyborg shouldn't be around here in 2000. All right, it's Monday. Monday morning, time to book a title fight. Andre Arlovsky, Brandon Lee Hankel, Revolution FC interim heavyweight title match. This is not going to be good for Hinkle. I'm sorry, buddy, but you've earned it. <laughs> time to get time to get fucked. Oh no, no one's going to like this fight. But we need to crown a heavyweight, uh, an interim heavyweight champion, and there's not a good, there's not a there's not a good, um, you know, Hinkle's done well. He he he's earned his he's earned his uh, interim heavyweight title, <laughs> but it's just there's such a there's such a difference in guys, and I hate to have to do that because I know people are, I know that the audience, maybe not you guys in general like the chat, but I know in game they're gonna hate it. Um. Mikhail or Hoffman? Let's do Hoffman. On the main card, on the preliminary card, so they're going to go down there. And then Hasdol, nah. Let's see, McKee. McKee should probably have something. Kit Cope could have a, a fight. Let me see, McKee. McKee and Cope, nah. <coughs> Shakir and Cope. That'd be interesting. I think I, I think I wouldn't mind that. Nuri Shakir and Kit Cope. There you go. Only three heavyweight fights this time, but that's all right. Alex Cook gets his co main event after his big win. Nuri Shakir gets another gets a chance to uh, show his stuff off against Kit Cope. Got Scuff Kurt Angle looking to uh, come back into it against uh, a guy making his debut. 
Jens Pulver gets to come back in after uh, taking a loss to Josh Barnett. Oh, Barnett. Where the fuck is Barnett? Did he leave? Uh, is he still on my roster? Yeah, Barnett's still on my. Where where the fuck is Barnett? Is he is he in a fight already? Did I put him in a fight? Uh oh, Barnett's facing Carlos Barreto. Okay. Fuck, I... <laughs> where's Barnett dead? Part of me wants to wait on the interim heavyweight title fight between Arlovsky and Hinkle to put Barnett in there because Barnett is probably the best possible option to face Arlovsky. But I think it's long enough away that we can do Barnett Arlovsky in like December around the time of the uh, Grand Prix and I think by that point I I think uh, Adam still wouldn't quite be back Scott Adams still has three months left so he's still he's still got a little he he'd be back in time for the Grand Prix. <clears throat> hmm. Fuck! I don't really want to make Hinkle have to fight like that. I might I might cancel that. Arlovsky, uh, you know what? Can I do Arlovsky versus to be announced? And it'll probably be Barnett. Because Hinkle... Hinkle's going to get murdered by Arlovsky. I'm pretty sure. I still have an opportunity to put him in if I want. I still have an opportunity to put him in if I really want. But I might wait. So we'll just leave it be for now. All right. All right. So we got our Jersey show revolution 24 featuring our final women's open weight championship match. And of course we crown our first ever revolution FC light heavyweight champion as Alexander Franco Nogueira takes on Mark Hall. So Nogueira versus Hall on the show here main event of course to determine the first light heavyweight champion he is main eventing a revolution show for the sixth time of course he is a former open weight champion and let me see here his name value his name value is great i can't believe he hasn't getting signed by guys i like it i like the fact that no one is signing him <laughs> please let me keep him for as long as possible now that i've mentioned it he's absolutely going to be He's worth so much money too. Did I just re I just resigned him for a bunch of money, didn't I? <clears throat> I think I had to throw a bunch of money at him because he just resigned. I think. Either way, uh, he's he submitted three of his last five opponents. However, Hall won the last three of his five fights by decision. This is the first time these two have fought. Hall has a weight advantage. However. Uh, Noguera, by a large margin, has the betting odds. We got Aaron Tuffle, the women's open weight champion. And uh, she'll be making the final defense of the title for quite some time as uh, these two fight in a rematch where Tuffle won by unanimous decision. Jackson, though, has a weight advantage. Tuffle will be leaving after this, and she is a big favorite to win. Vernon White versus Cara Parisian. A lot of people going for White on this one. He is the number one ranked light heavyweight, despite the fact I don't think he's fought a single fight with us. That's why I don't like the ranking system in this game. I really wish I could just... I, I wish I could just slide in my own ranking system. I really thought that's how you could do it, and it, and it wasn't. So I'm not too thrilled on that. 
either way, this is Vernon White's debut. Kyra Parisian has uh, lost all three of his fights thus far. However, uh, at least two of them are Arlovsky and and Pulver. Monson is one thing, but you know Arlovsky and Pulver. We'll see what happens. White's a big favorite to win. All right, Josh Barnett versus Carlos Barreto. Uh, Barnett with the weight advantage. This is the debut of Carlos Barreto, of course. And uh, Barnett, I would say, one of the uh, top contenders here. A possible, once again, I, I, I'm going to have to come to the decision between Barnett and Hinkle as to who's going to fight Arlovsky. I know what the betting odds are for Hinkle. Not so sure about Barnett, and we'll have to see what happens at the end of this fight. Uh, just how long it might take him to recover. <clears throat> Jonathan Ivy versus Rodney Glunder. This is the Revolution debut of Ivy. I felt like I've had him for a while, and I just never used him. But uh, either way, here he is facing Glunder. But everyone assuming that Rodney Glunder going to come away from the victory here. He has, uh, he he has broken his losing streak. He did win his last fight against Joe Camacho. So. Uh, he's doing pretty well. And, of course, the la the losses that you can see that he's had, Mike Pyle, Steve Lee, Takeuchi, Nogueira, I mean, they've been against strong opponents. So against a guy like Jonathan Ivey, he should come up with an easy win here. Dirty Bob Schreiber. We had Alex Cook finally break his massive losing streak with us. Is tonight the night that Dirty Bob Schreiber finally gets over the hump? He faces... Uh, Moise, 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 I'm thinking Moise Rimbon making his pro debut tonight. Like I said, Bob Schreiber looking for his first official win in Revolution. Alex Cook got over the hump last month. We'll see if he can get over that this month. But uh, Rimbon is uh, the, the overall favorite here. Dave Manet, J.R. Palmer, very close between these two guys. The last time they fought was back in 1997. If we take a look at the history here, uh, Dave Manet got the win back in September, so it's almost three years to the month. But uh, Manet, since then, has uh, gotten a, a bit of a losing streak here. He's looking to get himself back into this, uh, as is J.R. Palmer, who has lost uh, five of his last six, including his most recent loss to Nakayama. So uh, he's looking to get himself a nice win here, too. And then finally, Justin the Reaper Martin. I believe it's his Revolution debut facing uh, Andy Wang, who has fought recently. He lost to uh, Christoph Mado. So close between the both of them. We'll see what happens as they fight now. And this will be this will be it after this with this uh, with this. Um, event here martin immediately shooting for the takedown that is uh that is good that is good for martin to do that i wonder if he's a fast starter Let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this up and then he's a leg lock master and he loves to roll all right it looks like yeah martin's still staying on top of him We'll see if he decides to do the same thing, and yes, he does. Justin Martin, once again, taking him down. I feel like Justin, uh-oh, knee bar. Ooh. I feel like Justin Martin, um, if, if, if he can be good enough, it'd be an interesting fight to see him and Nogueira face one another. And uh, see how quickly they each try to get into each other into submissions. Lack of progress, nothing happening here. But I think Justin Martin has already shown enough uh, to prove. Yeah, he's already gotten three takedowns on him. That's going to be the end of round two. That has to be 2018 Martin. That should just be an easy victory for Justin Martin here. All three judges 2018 as he gets the win against Andy Wang. Average fight. Buddy wins his Revolution debut. Name checks everyone, and there you go. Dave Manet, J.R. Palmer. Haven't fought each other in about three years. Both men looking for a strong win. Palmer coming forward here. I'm kind of rooting for Manet on this one. I want him to break that long-ass losing streak he's had. 
But Palmer, Palmer, even though he he's won more recently, has got a lot of losing fights under him now. I think he came to us. Did he come to us? Ugh, he came to us like with a much better record. Yeah, because he was he was eleven and zero when he came to us. Now he's thirteen and six. He went from amazing eleven and zero to just being, eh. Just a dude. I feel bad saying that too. Ooh, Manet cut under his eye. And it's looking good for Palmer here. I'm trying to I'm trying to sit back in my chair because I think that's gonna keep me from sitting at weird ankles angles and uh, fucking up my neck and my eyes. Cause my eyes having to stare at the screen this much are starting to like bleh. Like it's really starting to blur a little bit. That's what happens when you take a nap and then try to stream until one in the morning. I'll be okay though. I should I should I should turn on my fan near my uh, computer just so you can hear how fucking broken it is. It is it is a mess. The thing is, it's a nice t it was a nice tower fan a couple years ago, but. I've just been I'm I'm a I'm a giant oaf. So what happens is I put my tower fan relatively close to my uh uh oh Manet Manet able to make it happen. Wow, he finishes him. Wow, I was looking at that going, oh man, he's got a big strike and was able to make it happen. That's his first official finish of his entire career with us. He has never finished a fight. They've always gone to decision. For the first time in his career with Revolution, he gets his first finish. 429, 31 seconds left in round two. Ends up getting the victory. There you go. Dave Monet thanking his sponsors. He shows respect to J.R. Palmer. <clears throat> Dirty Bob Schreiber versus Moise Rimbon. Let's see how this has a Rimbon. I mean, he's French, so it's probably like Rimbon. I don't know. Either way. So, yeah, I got this tower fan, and it works well. But because I'm a giant oaf and put my tower fan relatively close to my bed so that it, like, blows on me as I'm sleeping, I just, I've mule kicked it as I've gotten out of bed or just been in bed probably, like, I'd say at least 20 times. That thing's probably been kicked down at least 20 times. It just leans now. It just it just leans in general. It doesn't stand up straight anymore. It just kind of leans like 10 or 15 degrees to the left. Because it's just been kicked on its side so much. And I know I should I should just get a um a replacement. <clears throat> Cuz if I try to turn it on, it still works. But it just sounds so awful. It just has a rattling noise that's just so bad. Like there's no way you can like sleep with it on. <coughs> I might try to. We'll see. So it looks like Schreiber is once again uh just getting just getting his is uh um just being dealt with here there we go i should really take that other i should really take that other uh song out i like it's a good it's a good like i don't know it just gets too, way too quiet too much it makes me feel like something's wrong with the uh with the audio all right, let's see. Rimbon, oh, dead level at 19. Let's see what happens. All right, 19-19. Oh, my God. Schreiber has at least made it to round number three. He has a chance. He has a chance. Schreiber just needs to get in there. Rimbon just trying to take him down, though. I don't I don't think I think Schreiber might be too gassed at this point. Who knows? I think both these guys are pretty friggin' gassed. Let's see here. 
Gage in the center. Jabs. This is a this is a maybe. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's probably gonna do it here. I think Schreiber is gonna end up losing yet again after that because yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. Getting the takedown, I think, was gonna be enough. Should be 29-28 for Rimbon. And there you go. Schreiber, unfortunately, not able to follow in Alex Cook's footsteps in uh, in in getting the win here. But there you go. Rimbon getting his uh, pro debut victory. I don't know how well I uh, feel about how well he might do. It is his pro debut. So he's it's just his pro debut. So who knows? Schreiber is just a good tomato can first opponent. But here we go. Jonathan Ivy versus Rodney Glunder. Let's see what happens here. That's a lot of fights for Ivy. Clearly, this is like, clearly that record's from like later on. Oh my God. Immediately, Glunder just, just beating the shit out of him. That took no time. Just immediately. Oh my God. Lands a jab, crunching right hook, finds a jab, a right uppercut. He's down, pounds away on him, finishes him off. It's over. Less than a minute, Rodney Glunder. Take your money. Take both of your money. It's over. Rodney Glunder, big win. <clears throat> Showing that he's still got it in his first real like win streak in uh in his uh career with us so good for him coming back here showing showing that uh, that uh that fire that we uh you know once uh, you know that we had when uh we got him so that's that's solid all right and it gets nice and quick because now we just go straight to Josh Barnett versus Carlos Barreto here we go. This all hinges on how quickly and how much damage Barnett takes in this. So I either want Barnett or it's either going to be Barnett or Hankel to face Arlovsky in October. It really comes down to how much time it's going to take. <clears throat> Let's see here. He's, he's uh, Barreto's holding his own though right now. Barnett with the take. No, couldn't get the takedown. All right. Oh. Man, I can't wait for this week to be done. I'm three days. I'm three days done, so that's good. We had way less people than we usually have. So we had about half as many people um, running our area today as there usually is. So things were very slow going throughout the entire day. But I think that's what probably made for just a very relaxing day, which I'll, I'll take. I'll definitely take a, a relaxing day. Especially considering there's no mail going out tomorrow or today now. So they don't really particularly care. It helps. All right, let's see if Barnett has uh, has done it. All three judges, 2018 for Josh Barnett. Getting the victory here by unanimous decision. Decent enough fight. There you go. Once again, we'll have to see how long it takes him to recover. And uh, Vernon White versus Carol Parisian. Parisian looking for his first fight right now. He came in 6-0, and but... Uh, Ends up uh, with three straight losses just like that. So we'll see what happens here as he faces White. <coughs> it's amazing that not one person thought that Parisian might have a shot at winning, if I remember right. It might be the losing streak that he's in right now, too. Uh, yeah, it definitely, it still, it still definitely looks like White is just uh, being able to body him right now. Yeah, he's definitely able to body him in the clinch. 
So not a, not a whole lot right now as it seems like that's going to make time expire. They say Parisian might have just edged it. That's going to make a big difference, though, the Vernon White getting the takedown. Ooh, Parisian trying to trying to make a submission from the bottom. Nice. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I think they uh, – oh, White once again taking him down. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's over. <laughs> Holy shit. Just like that, White takes him down, and I'm sitting here going, oh, no, Parisian's definitely lost this round. But he locked his a guillotine in and then made him tap out as he hits the ground. And there you go. Kara Parisian out of nowhere getting a strong win over Vernon White. Holy shit. What a good what a great counter there. Getting taken down, but immediately just nope. Guillotine done. Kara Parisian getting his first win in Revolution. It was a tough fight. But he manages to just throw it on like it was nothing. And that is it. Co-main event features the final uh, Revolution Women's Open Weight Championship match. <clears throat> Aaron Tuffle, the champion, taking on challenger Mary Jackson. Tyrone Huff, the referee for this contest. I'll probably just get rid of Mary Jackson because Tuffle's gone and I won't have any sort of um I won't have any sort of um uh well, you know um division at that point. So, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> It'd be nice to see Mary Jackson win, but I think Tuffle's probably going to probably going to do well here. Let's see, quick one, two. Um, it seems like it's mostly mostly Tuffle doing a lot of the uh a lot of the punching here. Yeah, I think that was mostly uh, well they say Jackson might have done it. Tuffle Tuffle didn't seem happy that uh that uh, she she didn't really appreciate how that first round went. We'll see if uh, second round she comes in and attacks a little bit more. It does it does look like it, but she's not able to land much, so that's pretty good. <clears throat> Let's see here, big right hand. Okay, Jackson's still doing well right now. Tuffle's trying to make something happen here. She's throwing punches, but Jackson's avoiding them. All right. All right. Doing pretty well for the for both of them here. Jackson might be able to make this happen. Tuffle's really got to come in and try to make something happen. I don't know if that was enough. We'll see. It says it's tied 19-19. Still got a couple more rounds. <coughs> It's been very close between the both of them thus far. We'll see here. Once again, she's she's still. Tuffle's looking tired. Jackson's looking tired. Oh. You see here. Uh oh. Now she's throwing knees. That's probably that's probably better. Use use some of that. Uh, I don't know. You're facing a kickboxer, so I don't know. But uh, I think she's definitely controlling here more in the third round. I think she started to figure it out. She she had kind of a rough first round, but Jackson's photo looks like she took it at the DM. It really does look like she took it at the DMV. Yeah. Yeah, I think Tuffle definitely has the third round. So Jackson's going to have to work her way in here on the fourth round. But I think what happened is Tuffle... Didn't think too much about it in the first round, and she got kind of kind of dazed, and she started bringing herself back in the second and third. And either here, Mary Jackson's going to come back and change the tide, or Tuffle's just going to complete the um, complete her uh, her uh, comeback. Well, I guess it's not so much a comeback at this point, but complete her um, her uh, moving in here on Jackson. 
It looks like it looks like that's the way it's going to happen too. Tuffles, Tuffles found her stride. You know, started finding her stride in the second round. Found it in the third, and has definitely kept it going in the uh, in the fourth here. As it looks like Jackson's been controlled very heavily by uh, the lighter uh, Mary Tuffle or Aaron Tuffle. Jesus. So I think that's how it's going to work here. Let's see, 39-37, Aaron Tuffle getting the victory on that one. Her first official defense of the Revolution FC Women's Open Weight Championship. And she's going to throw the title back in the ring and head on out. And <laughs> she takes the belt off, throws it, throws it at me, and then uh, signs you or uh, smack, smack girl to the crowd. As uh, she's out of here. Name checks to everyone. Title strapped her on her waist. She celebrates it. And then tosses it aside. Main event to determine the first ever Revolution FC light heavyweight champion. Alexandra Franco Noguera taking on Mark Hall. Kurt Funk, the referee in this contest. Bit of a size disadvantage for Noguera, but not a huge one. And immediately getting the takedown. That's what I like to see. Noguera getting back into stride here. He uh, seems like the last couple of fights he didn't do too much here. Ooh, trying immediately to get some uh, some submissions locked in here. <clears throat> oh, my God. It's, a, it's over. It's immediately over. In the first round, you'd think maybe it'd go a little bit. Nope. Done. Alexandra Franco Noguera getting the win 421 by Kimura in the first round. And we have our first ever Revolution FC light heavyweight champion, Alexandra Franco Noguera. And he has the title strapped around his waist. He celebrates becoming the first and new champion. There you go. 70 rating, commercial rating, quite high, actually. 406 people. We finally hit the 400 mark. So I feel pretty good about that one. 2.5% in our popularity increase. That is nice. Fight of the night. Submission of the night for Paris. Oh, yeah, dude. That that flash submission. It's not often you get to see a flash submission. Uh, Manet over... Yeah, actually, Manet's comeback knockout over Palmer definitely deserves knockout. Parisian's flash submission deserves submission. And Noguera being crowned first light heavyweight champion deserves the fight of the night. <clears throat> Thirty-two thousand dollars on the on the month. Man, we're getting some ads and sub money here. I'm liking this. We're gonna we're gonna have enough money to get our to to get a bigger um get a bigger deal here, or a uh, at least uh, upgrade our uh, our sports network. J.R. Palmer is coming to the end of his Revolution contract. Let's get this. Let's get this out of the way. Nine hundred. All right, I'll take that. Nines. <clears throat> Four years, ten fights. There you go. J.R. Palmer definitely gets to stay. Oh shit! I thought we already did it. Noguera. Oh. We are spending some money, y'all. It's you know what? It's our first true, truly big star. I'll say I I am more than happy to shell out the bones for one Alexandra Franca Noguera. If we can get ten fights out of him, I'm gonna up it to sixteen. There you go. Four years, 10 fights, $3,900. He's pricey, but he's been worth it. Aaron Tuffle left. So we've got a now vacant belt. And edit belt. Uh, no. There you go. So there you go. First light heavyweight champion, Alexander Franco Noguero. 
And where is Mary? Mary Jackson. <clears throat> uh, oh, shit. How do I cut people? There's a way to do it. Cut, 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 cut. I think there's a cut thing on here, right? Right, right, right. Cut from roster. Mary Jackson. Cut from the roster. There you go. And I think we're, I, I mean, weight cl we'll keep the weight class in, I guess. Well, you know what? We'll put it back in when we actually get a division again. <coughs> So we retire or at least deactivate the title. We deactivate our women's open weight title. The lineage at least remains for now. And uh, we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back later. There we go. So I'll take I'll take that. We could probably have a November pay-per-view set up. Oh, absences. And we are looking at Josh Barnett, 27 days. That will give him. That'll give him till Monday. Uh, that'll give him about five weeks. Mm, I think that should be enough time. I think that should be enough time. <clears throat> All right. Let's get to a new month. See what we got. I won't worry about much of anything else right now. I'll just take a look at this here. Tiki Gosson is gone. Stephen Powling is gone. Nogueira resigned. Palmer resigned. <sighs> Welp. I guess we're changing that heavyweight title fight. <laughs> I guess it'll be what? Brandon Lee Hankel versus Josh Barnett. <laughs> I knew it. I knew. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, at least we don't need an interim heavyweight title anymore. Jesus Christ. Hey, Tank Abbott sign. There you go. All right. Fucking dump the... <laughs> I guess fucking dump this for right now because we don't need it. I just want to look at the active ones. What? I thought just do a no. It can't retire the belt. There's no fight scheduled for it. All right, so it's just going to sit there, I guess. Whatever. Scott Adams is leaving. Ah. <laughs> oh. Can I get him in a fight here? Can I can I get him to, here before he re-signs? I want to see if I can get him in a if I can get him in a title fight. <clears throat> oh no, Scott Adams is yeah, that's right. He's too busy recovering right now, so he can't be anywhere. So he's just going to toss the title back at us. Like we're shit. All right. I'll, I'll look at the other, I'll, I'll look at these other guys later. I need as I need as many dudes as I can think of because, yeah, I'm, lo I'm losing dudes. All right, I'm gonna save this and then go cry into my pillow, as uh, I, uh, I I deal with the the <laughs> impending doom upon my heavyweight division, as my champion and number one contender are both leaving and now I have to figure out obviously Barnett's going to be in the next or is going to be in the official heavyweight title match now because Arlovsky I mean Arlovsky I can't put an interim title on Arlovsky so the training preparation already done chance for the next fight as long as they're rebooked within the next seven days yeah that's yeah, Arlovsky's leaving, so Barnett will probably get slotted into that main event for the heavyweight title. Who he's facing, maybe Hankel again. Did he face Brandon Lee Hankel once already? <clears throat> uh, he hasn't, so that might be how I do it. I might do uh, Hankel Barnett, and that'll probably be another uh, beatdown of Brandon Lee Hankel, but... 
I don't have much of a choice at this point. All right. Well, there you go. So thanks, guys, for coming out. I appreciate it. I've done I've done okay. We've got our finances pretty well in order. I like this. I like the money that we're making. We're slowly moving on up. Like I said, we make about a quarter million dollars. We're going to spend our money again on an even bigger uh, broadcaster. And that should get us even more... Um, you know, ad money. Our advertising revenue has been nice. Our um, gate receipts have been going up and up. So we're doing quite well with that. And uh, I think we'll do pretty well. I like this. We're, we're getting there. I think we're, we're closing in on... Um, we're closing in on mid-level regional. We're still a little ways away. That's still like 34% or something like that. But either way... There you go. Thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens to our heavyweight division when I come back, but I won't worry about it too much right now. So thank you, and I will see you guys next time.